Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. Justin Fox here. I am joined here by Matthew Diamond. Uh, Matthew, thank you very much for joining me. No worries. How are you today? Good? Good. It's like, uh, it feels like spring outside in Toronto today. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I think it's going to go up to 16. So I'm actually at the beach down south. I, I took I, a jet early for March break that doesn't exist. But anyways, I see you're at the coffee shop. That's right. I'm at my coffee shop. Perfect. Yeah. So are, what's your plans? Sorry to keep you inside on a beautiful, you know, spring day in Toronto, but um, appreciate you being here. So yeah, no. I'll do, I'll do a quick intro. So you're uh, Matthew, you're, is it Matt or Matthew? Uh, whatever rolls off your tongue best today. I, I like Matt. We'll go we'll stick with Matt. So, with Matt. uh, passionate marketer, thought yep. leader, intra and entrepreneur. Um, and you are, uh, you previously owned and operate. So you were previously with mosaic. We'll talk a little bit about, you just mentioned that threw that out there. Um, yep. previously had a, a marketing agency and you're a lecturer with MBA students at the Ivy business school, which is essentially, uh, the Western, uh, the MBA program yep. at Western University. Um, so welcome to the show. Thanks. So, so, so you just dropped a bit of a, I guess, a doozy right before we went yeah. to record. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about what are you doing right this moment or what yeah. inspired recently that if you yeah, yeah, for sure. dive right in, if you don't dive mind right us in, yeah. asking. There you go. No, no, for sure. For sure. No, no. Happy to give you an update. Um, but uh, listen, I've been fortunate. I've had a wonderful career. Right. Um, you know, as you said, Think of myself as a marketeer, um, okay. you know, the and three it's marketeers, both, three marketeers. Uh, like and it's, it. been on, it's been on many sides. You know, I, I cut my teeth as a client, if you will, okay. in my okay. vernacular, uh, craft foods way back when I learned how to market jello and cereal and all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, I then went and marketed my other passion, which is sports. And okay. so I went from marketing food products to marketing the hockey NHL, players. right? Yeah, the right? Yeah. I was at the Players Association. Yeah. And you know, depending on how much time there is, I can tell you fun stories about that. Well, I'd love to go down that. I mean, I, I don't know if you, you know, I run and launched a three on three pro hockey league called the 3HL. So we'd exactly. love to discuss, discuss we that. We can get into that yeah, for, for sure. sure. Um, and then, you know, did a stint with an internet startup. So that was okay. the first sort of entrepreneurial flavor where. Okay. You know, I got out of, you know, from big corporate craft to sort of interesting place with sports to then like, you know, the online advertising era, the dot com, you know, bubble when it was before it burst. Okay. Um, and then, you know, and then it went agency side. Uh, and like for the last 20 years, I've been very fortunate. I've had a really wonderful career. I worked with a great entrepreneur. I mean, he's got his little podcast, I think, called Chatter That Matters uh, with Tony Chapman and a place called Capital C. And we okay. grew it, grew it, grew it. And then, you know, and then I wanted to do my own thing. And so I was fortunate to partner up with some guys that I knew from before. Um, they had an existing agency. Um, I joined it. It was called Hunter Spraker. And we morphed it and evolved it. And again, we can talk about that story, how you take something and reposition it and grow it. And to the point, we're all of a sudden like the largest, most respected agency in Canada, maybe in North America, Mosaic comes along and right. they're like, what's going on? And, you know, after a little while, we agreed to, to sell to Mosaic. And okay. I spent the last eight years sort of incubating that agency and expanding it with Mosaic. And it was like a phenomenal eight years. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been a great eight years. And uh, as I was saying, I'm no longer with Mosaic. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm sort of plotting out the next chapter. And to be honest, I'd love to tell your audience today exactly what it is. I can tell you it's probably going to be a departure from what I've done, sort of marketing agency services. I think I'm going to okay. pull time out for a while and get back to a bit more of my entrepreneurial roots. Um, okay. And so I'm, you know, I'm incubating a few things, but um, right at this moment, like I'm actually just taking a pause. I haven't cool. paused in like 25 years. Hey, we all, we all deserve a reset. I think the whole world's getting a reset right now. That's right? it. So, well, that's it. Yeah. And, and doing stuff like this, like reaching yeah. out, I was, you know, I, I like, I like talking to entrepreneurs. I like hearing about their stories. I like learning about new businesses and, and, you know, taking all of the interesting skill sets that I have. And then the one thing I'm super passionate about and still am is, you know, I'll give you my motto, Justin. I think we're born in this world 
able to do one of two things. We either save lives or inspire lives. Okay. Saving lives would be clearly in the medical Do profession. I was going to say doctor, firefighter, police officer. Doctor, yeah, you can yeah, say paramedic. You could say, yeah. you could say the scientist that cracked the COVID. Oh, oh the other side, yeah. yeah. Like, like that's, those are like, they are getting those facts out as fast yeah. as they can to save lives. Yeah. That was not my calling. But I think I'm, my calling was to inspire lives. And the greatest gift I believe is to inspire young minds. And so that's when that I, opportunity to teach at Ivy, you know, right. seven years ago popped up. Um, and I'm, you know, very grateful that I get to once a year, get into the classroom, roll up my sleeves, work with aspiring young MBA students. And, right. you know, when their eyes are like shining wide, try to inspire them of, you know, what's going on. And as, as you know, from, I think your audience too, like, when I was going through Ivy, it was, oh, who's coming on campus? Is it Goldman Sachs? Is it Procter & Gamble? Is it Labatt? Right. Like, who is it? Now it's like they're all incubating their ideas and they want to launch their own businesses. They all want to, you know, see what it's like to be an entrepreneur. So it's just tides have changed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in, in, yeah, in that period of time, I mean, I, I think we're probably similar in age. So yeah, yeah. I, there was definitely, it was more, when I was in university, it was like, where are you going to go work? Now yep. I think that the, there's definitely a, a shift to where, what are you going to start, right? I think the, the Zuckerberg story of, you know, in your base, whatever it is, or, you know, Steve Jobs in yep. your basement, you know, or in a garage or wherever, right? Just kind of starting something in a dorm room, right? Typing in some code, starting yep. something. Um, I, I, I read some of their, so I, I'm terrible at quotes. I'm terrible at <laughs> okay. terrible memory, but I read somewhere at some point sort of doing I do a little bit of background research yeah. sometimes yeah. that you've, that you're, um, is it you've won awards as sort of like a, a, or you're recognized as being a, one of the top professors at Ivy? Jeez, you did, you did, you really did your homework, didn't that, you? Did, I, I forget exactly what I read, but oh, yeah. my, so my, my, my was, mind is very like, whatever. Yeah. No, it's all good. I love the energy. Um, my <laughs> mind's like that too sometimes, but <laughs> No, I was, listen, I was really fortunate. I think it was uh, three years ago, um, the class that I had um, nominated me. Um, so it was the former dean um, okay. uh, who passed on. It was called the Lawrence Tapp Teaching Excellence Award at Ivy. Right. And so, you know, here I am surrounded by these Harvard, Stanford, PhD, right. you know, DBAs, you know, who I have immense respect for pure academics. And I feel like I'm the, you know, the, the smallest child at the table <laughs> um, coming forward without right. the same, but I bring a different lens. I do right. bring a a real, real lens. world, a real world, that's it. right. Right. Yeah. Real world, you know, stories, et cetera, drawn different experiences. And, you know, the, the students flattered me and they, you know, they nominated me for the Ivy um, award for teaching excellence that year. Awesome. So that, was, awesome. that was a nice, that was a nice honor. That, that's cool. That's cool. So I, I, I won't say that, but so you, so you have, do you ever feel kind of like the imposter syndrome where you're, you know, you're in the, you're in the room and everyone else is sort of at that level is seemingly accomplished more. Obviously you're there because you've accomplished a lot, but sure. just kind of, you get that, that imposter feeling. It's almost so, like entrepreneurs too, right? They, they oh, get that absolutely. feeling, right? I mean, I think it's a good analogy. I think I, you know, clearly early on, I, I felt that way. And then, you know, I kind of reminded myself of like, where have I been successful in my career? Right. Where have I seen the most traction on things? And yes, you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to set a vision. You need to have a strategy. You need to execute with excellence. But, you know, I think the best entrepreneurs are the ones or the best business minds are the ones who are always open to collaborate right. and know that they can be better off when they are pushed sometimes with different thinking. And in yeah. a day and age today of, you know, however we define diversity of thought, diversity of, you know, Everything. room, everyone wants a diverse collaborative perspective. I now feel that it's the, you know, it's the opposite. It's that you know, Ivy will embrace that I come in with a different background and those that are there that have a different background than me, I embrace because we make each other better in a different way. Right. It's interesting you mentioned like the pushing, right? The pushing of boundaries. And, sure. and often if, if you, I always talk about like, so my wife and I both went away to university, right? So, so that was sort of the first kind of, in my experience, the first time kind of like experiencing something a little different, right? Like it was sort of like, wow, there's people that sort of are different 
you know, you grow up in sort of a homogenous, whether it's cultural or not, but it's, it's in your one sort of little area and then you go somewhere else. But then, you know, going out to the rest of the world and experiencing different places, experiencing different, uh, you know, ideas and thoughts, definitely it, it, it broadens your horizons, right? It kind of gives you that, yes. that uh, perspective. So um, let, let's talk, let's go back NHLPA. Let's yeah, go let's back NHLPA. Um, I, I had kind of a funny question. Best and worst person you ever met. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it for you. Oh, really? No question. Okay. Yeah, okay. Be, okay. Well, well, do you want to go? Do you no. want to start with best or worst? I don't. I don't oh, know. Man. I don't want to be careful, right? I want to make That's sure. I don't, <laughs> care. Cool don't worry. Um, no one's going to see this. This is yeah. uh, this is minimal. Minimal. No, listen, here's what I can right? say. I, I'm yeah. going to listen. I'll leave. I will honestly tell you that what impressed me the most about dealing with hockey players and and you know i went deepest on hockey players i've dealt with basketball players i've dealt with baseball players like you know you're in the marketing world long enough you get right privileged opportunity to go to award shows and games and do programs right but i still think that and you know obviously being proudly from canada the canadian mentality of having a parent or parents hopefully taking you five, 6 a.m. in the morning, six, seven days a week, maybe two, three times a day. Right. Yeah, it's about hard work and discipline and sacrifice. And I truly believe that hockey players come at it with this perspective of just that great Canadian-esque work ethic and DNA. And so my favorite story I think ever was, um, you know, depending on your hockey uh, knowledge, Adam Graves. Okay, yeah, Rangers. Rangers captain on the sweater like you know warrior he had that great career with the oilers at one point but you know played a lot with the rangers at the end and it was in new york and i was doing this event down in new york and i was finished the event and you know he just looks at me and he's like um you know like matthew where, where are you going i said well I, I have to go back to my hotel i have to you know finish up my work he's like no 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 like you're one of us tonight you're coming with you're going to go like there was this post. Let's just that. Hold on. What, what era was this? Cause there's a coming with when, if he was on the Oilers days, right. The Rangers days. Right. That's, yeah, I won't even get into names. Nah, yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I've heard like, stories of what the parties in the sort right. of yeah, well, not, like, yeah, late, later than that, later than that's that. That's right. Okay. A little okay. later. Yeah. This was okay. sort of mid, 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 uh, this was probably 90. If I think like late nineties, late nineties. Okay. Okay. Late nineties. Um, but no, literally there was like an after party. There was a, nice. there, was, there was a charity event. So there were some celebrities and him and it was just, he treated me like an equal in that moment. Right. He didn't differentiate. Of course I worked for the NHL players association, right. but he just, uh, you know, and I found, like Mark Recchi, if you remember Mark Recchi, yeah, yeah. like Flyers. soldier and, and, you know, Adam Graves, if you really do your homework on him, he grew up with 20 foster brothers, oh, yeah. sisters. Was he a foster child or was his, he was, I don't believe he was, but okay. I think his parents went on and they just said they wanted to help people out. Right. Right. And did, and, you know, so that's, that's just one example, but I, you know, great players along the way, Luke Robitaille was probably one of actually my, the, the, the guy who had the most, fun and i did a great event called the blue pickup cup with cbc and hockey night in canada at one point in time right it was chris chris pronger okay yeah yeah like another I oiler i think you've named about four oilers oh yeah, yeah. but you know he was on the blues at that point yeah. in time and he was just constant comedian cracking jokes so yeah. i was really fortunate those the guys were honestly like they were just down to earth and really cool to deal with oh yeah definitely i mean with the three hl we have you know we've had about 35 guys that have played in the NHL kind yeah. of come through the league. Bernie Nichols is one of our mm. advisors. You talked about Luke Robitaille, right? So yeah. all time LA King. Great. Right. Ranger oh, yeah. as well. Um, you know, so we, I talk to him all the time, but yeah, super nice guys. I mean, right. I, I, I personally, I haven't dealt with a lot of on a personal level, certain yeah. other sports athletes. Um, yeah. So I can only say from afar, but definitely, yeah, the hockey sort of, yeah, there, there's definitely a, an appreciation, like you said, but I think all athletes go through, especially, you know, at that level there, it's a, it's a lot of work, hard work years, you know, it's not an over, it's the, the old adage of everything else. It's like a 20 year overnight success, right? It's, you, you know, it. It, there's a lot that's gone into that. So um, definitely. Yeah. The, the, uh, the hockey players are great. So should we ask who the worst one was then? <laughs> we'll save that one you and i'll have, yeah we'll have, have that on our, 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 yeah okay okay yeah. oh we should you know what here I'll, hey i'll throw this out there i'm gonna throw yeah. my hat in the ring sure. then the 3hl 
and marketing some sort of anyways we can talk about that yeah, off exactly. there. but yeah. hey you know what there, there could there could be an opportunity there come join the uh the burgeoning three-on-three professional hockey there you go Love um, it. in some sort of marketing context Love um it. Yeah. cool or, or or player association or whatever player association yeah right. whatever exactly three hlpa yeah. um cool go. so well yeah. Matt, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, typically, we kind of go uh, at the end of the, this kind of ask if there was sort of one word, one piece of advice. Actually, I'm going to ask you two questions. Yeah. I, I kind of got away from the other one, but I think it'd be fun here. Um, one word, one piece of advice that you would give to sort of a younger you um, hmm. that, you know, when when you're starting out or, or you know, obviously anyone that's kind of starting out. Um, yeah. And I think some people's answers are the same, actually. If you're standing on the edge of a cliff and you're about to fall off, what would be sort of your last words to like your loved ones or to, to the world? Wow. Uh, you can answer both either or uh, none. I mean, well, let me, you know, like, like the, 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 ed- the edge of the cliff one is pretty like it's, it's, and I try to do that. It's, it's, it's carpe diem. It's, it's, you know, this pandemic sadly has just taught us that we really don't know. And, and, you know, I, I think, you know, now maybe I'll ladder back to when I was younger. I think when you're young, you get caught up in looking just like almost like two or three steps ahead. So the example would be, okay, I'm at a school, I'm being recruited, maybe I've got two or three opportunities, maybe one is to start a business, two are going to go employed by someone, how do I decide what to do? And you know, people overanalyze it. Well, is it going to lead me here and there? And right. I really think you just like, just put your head down. And get yourself, you know, my, uh, I was, I was fortunate in that growing up, um, a mentor of mine was Seymour Schulich, um, okay. yeah. Schulich Business School, Schulich yep. Center for Art. He's written many books. It's in his book, but you know, the one or two times where I, I, was- I just a quick story. I used to run a home healthcare equipment business. I started okay. about seven, eight years ago and okay. we outfitted his house with all the hospital beds and everything. Perfect. Well, there yeah. you go. And so, you know, if you know a little bit of, yeah. like, but one of his mottos was, under 30, no mistakes. You cannot make a mistake. Like it's about learning and getting experience and then just get yourself sort of in the area you're passionate about. And so that would be my last advice is right. don't ignore the passion that burns inside you. Follow it. Don't ignore the passion. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. I will, uh, yeah. Don't ignore the passion. Follow the passion. And what were your last words? Carpe diem. I went, to, I went to Brock actually. That's our, yeah. uh, that was the motto for Brock. There you um, go. Not, not a prestigious as Western. Um, oh, there are Brock's a good I, I, I did. I, I had kin at Western, kin at York or phys at Brock. One of the three nice. back in the, back in the old OAC days. Yeah, of course. And then, uh, those chose, chose, chose Brock had a good lacrosse team. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. Nice. Never, never look back. Never back looked then back. I, I had no, I had no decision made. It was just like, whatever, Whatever nice. is going to happen, I'm just going to go do it. We'll see how nice. see how it plays out. Well, uh, nice. Matt, wh- where can they find you? Can they find you on like social? wherever you want? For sure, uh, yeah. follow me. Follow, yeah. follow follow me on LinkedIn. Follow LinkedIn. me on Instagram and Facebook. TikTok. Uh, yeah. Tick, tick, tick. You know, my kids tease me all the time. My daughter is like, TikTok. I ask everyone on here, like, why? Yeah, are you going to no, get on? There? Okay, so in the spirit of like, you know, being better. I've done a couple, I put, but I, I'm going to go out in your, in the show's behalf and I'm going to get some traction going on my TikTok. Perfect. I did a few back almost a year ago. We were, we went March break. Yeah. Um, we were going away and we went with the kids and uh, we did a bunch that week. So, nice. um, but yeah, I haven't nice. done any since. So I should, yeah. I should take my own advice and jump back into TikTok. It's fun. It's fun. Well, I mean, my Twitter handle is at Matthew Diamond and there's a okay. director in Hollywood, Matthew Diamond, and he approached me three times because he oh. wanted to buy the handle from me, but I was an early adopter. Okay. How, yeah. how much did he ask or, or did he offer? He never really got to that like, the price. We, we, we sort of like, oh, come on. I was just like, no, nah, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm the real Matthew. You're the, yeah, you're the, you're the real, real. yeah, we don't want to be the real anything. That's the worst Twitter handle out That's right, right now. That's, That's right. like the, uh, the don't go there. Don't cool. go there. Yeah. yeah. Well, Matt, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, everyone else, check him out. Matthew Diamond, um, LinkedIn, as you said, the original Matthew Diamond at Matthew Twitter Diamond handle. Twitter handle and on TikTok. Are you the at Matthew there Diamond you know. on TikTok as well? 
Uh, I have to double check. I don't think I got that one. No. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, they they can out. search out, I'm sure. I'm sure. And out. we'll talk. We'll have to get a beer sometime. Yeah, yeah, talk about good. who that NHLPA player was and the three HLPA. Nice. But, uh, anyways, Before cool. Judge. Everyone Thanks else. So yeah, thank you very much. Everyone else, this is uh, Justin Fox, Matthew Diamond, One Take Powered by Backers. I will see you guys again very soon. Hey there, welcome to One Take Powered by Backers. Right? No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now.